Okay, so, um, hello everybody and welcome to tonight's stream. Um, my name is Neil, I am the writer and creator of Fey Earth, an indie TTRPG system set in an alternate 19th century Earth where all the creatures and folklore and fairy tale are real, have always been real, and live alongside humanity. And welcome to our weekly actual play live stream. Uh, set in France in the year 1872. It's approximately nine months, I can't remember now, I should know this, since a pretty devastating war in which France and Prussia allied against the Fey nation of Arcadia, hoping to invade and take some of their territory and wealth when the elven king died and his son took over the first time that that nation had had a change in leadership in over 600 years it was a short but tough series of battles with the human armies at first inflicting quite surprising casualties on the fey um because of more the more modern artillery that humans have and their more modern firearms but then the fey adapted to these new weapons with new tactics and in the final day of the battle there was a devastating attack in which thousands of soldiers were killed some say it was some ancient magics being unleashed while others say it was dragons but there is much speculation on this as it has been nearly 500 years since a dragon has been seen anywhere in Europe. But before we start, I would like to invite one of our players to give us a recap of our last session. Okay, so we started the last session with the dragons and who are demanding their treasure back because it's gone missing. And poor Sylvia has obviously experienced the terror of real dragon during the war um and had a, a ptsd flashback to possibly her last moments with her wife before she passed away um and sylvia was very traumatized so we hurried her back to the bar where mina chatted to the innkeeper and got some further information about the farmer who was flashing his cash the night before um very suspiciously we figured he was probably the one who stole the dragon's treasure. Um, so we were about to head off to his farm when we learned the mysterious stranger who had appeared in the bar the night before had also gone off to this guy's farm. So we had figured it out. Um, so we arrived at the farmer's farm. The mysterious stranger was there. We had a chat, figured out that he did indeed steal the gold um, and convinced him to give it back. So we escorted the farmer back to the town, to the mayor um and he confessed that he did in fact steal the dragon's gold um we got a ring of invisibility and our party rogue is going to be carrying that which is really exciting um and then we did a bit of a time jump um about seven days forward because we are going to Paris to find Mina's brother, but we just needed to uh, spend a couple of days around the town getting Sylvia's armor and getting some bits and bobs. Um, and then we closed the session with Sylvia receiving a letter from her brother that she, uh, she hasn't spoken to really since the end of the battle. Um, and I think that's where we left things yes that's exactly right so um neve you get 1d8 inspiration die that you can use at any Excellent. stage during the game for anything for any don't ability, forget it any ability check okay so no damage yes. rolls but literally in the middle any it's other great. roll that you can make okay yes. so uh, all right um so sylvia you having read your brother's letter get some writing materials and frantically write i'm just ride. gonna i'm just gonna go back down oh okay i was gonna go back downstairs and write it while yeah, i was having right. breakfast yeah. Yeah, so. yeah i'll go back downstairs so when sylvia comes back downstairs the rest of the party ha can see that she has been crying yeah. um but she'll she's just gonna sit down and she's gonna start writing and um wherever's Free. so and she's not being secretive about it she's just trying to get a letter written as quickly as possible so mina if you're um beside sylvia you can see it because it's going to be in german okay. she's not ma she's not making any effort to hide it because like she just wants to get it written and sent off as quickly as possible mm -hmm. so do you want to tell us what you write 
Oh, um, okay, yeah, I want. can. You don't have to, but yeah. if you want, I know our viewers would like to know. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, one second. All right. <clears throat> Should we step out? No, I, no, no. Well, as 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 Susie said, Sylvie is not hiding the letter, so right. Yeah, mean, I'm just mean, you know, I mean, I don't think you're I'll you're be actually reading get... it like consciously, you know, I mean, like no, but... I know, but do you know the way sometimes if someone's sitting next to you, you can kind of see what's there. You're not like yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but like so, a, like make a conscious her, effort. Her, her, hand, her handwriting, her handwriting's not like that bad, so you can read it. Like but... okay, so what have I got? Ah, hold on. My dear Heinrich, I received your letters this morning. I can't even begin to tell you how happy it made me to hear from you. I was so afraid that you would be angry with me for being silent for so long. And I'm so, so grateful to you for understanding. My hands were shaking as soon as I saw your handwriting. There's so much more that I want to say to you, but I don't know how to put it into words. I've missed you so much. And it would be wonderful to see you if you could get away. We definitely should talk. To be honest, I'm not sure you'd recognize me now because I fear all the best parts of me have are incinerated along with her. My new friends are all amazing. They're quickly becoming really important to me. I would love for you to meet them. Today, we are leaving Cherville to travel by train to Cambrai via Lyon and then Paris. One of my friends is searching for her brother. I don't know how long we'll be there, but we have to return to Cherville in three weeks regardless. One of the villagers was bitten by a werewolf, so I will ha need to have learned how to remove the curse by the end by the next full moon, or will have to put a silver bullet in his head. All oh, my love, Sylvia, is what I say. Okay, right. So you, oh, you heart wrenching. Uh, you seal up. The, you finish your breakfast quickly. You seal up the letter and you head to the post office. Mina, you said you wanted to go to the post office as well, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, so you both go to the post office and um, Susie, or Susie, um, Sylvia, <laughs> you give the postmistress the uh, the letter to send off to Berlin. I can't remember how much you said it. I know it was only a couple of copper. We'll say three copper, okay? Sure. P people in chat can correct me and tell me I was wrong. Um, but um, It wasn't that expensive. It wasn't like... a lot, no. I think it was about three copper. So you just deduct that from your character sheet. Yeah. And uh, Mina, you had instruction for the postmistress, yes? Yeah, just to, do you know what I mean? But I had a week to prepare, so I kind of think I probably would have told her that we're leaving to Chambray, and if they have a post office in the um, village to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. forward anything. Why do you say that you're going there? She says, oh, Cambrai, oh, up near the border. Oh, no, well, that's, that's hardly a village, my dear. It's a large town, practically a small city, in fact. Um, um, well, then they definitely have a post office, so if you could certain. send anything on, I'll go and, you know, collect. I, I just go and ask if there's anything. I'm not really expecting anything, but just in case. You are, so you, you are all leaving us, are you? Yeah, for now. Oh, for now, so you will be returning? Uh, yeah, we need, to, we need to come back. Okay, very good. Well, I'm sure the some of the local women would be very eager to get more lessons with, from you on um, the charms to protect against the fate. Oh, yeah, well, we have to come back anyway, so um, I am not sure how long we will be gone, but as, when I come back, I can certainly run more of the classes, if you would like. Well, uh, from what I've heard, Marie, the haberdasher's daughter, she's actually been um, learning as well, yes? People oh, to... yeah, and she's very, very good. That, um, that, that, that is good to know. That is good so she she can also uh, teach people, I'm sure, if um, people want to learn while we are gone. Wonderful. Well, listen, safe travels, and we shall see you all soon. Um, where was it you said you're going again? Oh, Cambrai, of course, yes. That's quite a trek. Maybe you'll drop off in Paris and spend some time there, too? Uh, well, we're in a hurry. Oh, oh I see. Important Bay business, is it? Yeah, something like that. Oh, I see. Very interesting. And you know this woman. She's like a terrible gossip. She's probing for information. So and I just say, tell... thank you very <laughs> much for that. Goodbye. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I'll mm. grab Sylvia and um, head out because um, I think we're about ready to go then. Yeah, so the mayor had told you uh, that uh, a carriage would be leaving at 10 o'clock that morning to get to um, Lyon. It's going, like, it's basically going to be the whole day. Like, it's about, 
it's about 10 hours uh, t- 10 uh, 11 hours or so 11 and a half hours oh. in, is is how long it will take you to get there because like it's a fair distance you know to get to uh to Lyon from Cheville um um just to just to, to put it in context I mean and this is a coach and um, coaches back then I was looking it up they I think they had an average speed of something like um was it something like 10 or 10, I think it was like 10 kilometers an hour um so yeah um but where is so so how much would the fare be for that now? um so the the um the the mayor had said that the town would pay for it you know oh so there i just looked it up it's 190 kilometers from cheville to Lyon. So like it's a fair distance. So you're gonna be um you stop off in a couple of towns along the way, um they, to rest, to have lunch, to have dinner, to change the horses, okay? Yeah. Um, Mina will probably snooze on the on the coach like yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, I'll just shaking it's just gonna make go. Absolutely. And, and you have been told they've arranged a night's accommodation for you when you get into Leon. Okay, so we're um, it's it's literally just ye in the carriage, um, in the coach. Yeah. The only people you could be talking to if you wanted to would be the driver if you stuck your head out, or random people in the um, inns um, that you stop off in. You know, so we're just gonna jump straight to um, to Leon. Okay. And Sylvia wouldn't be sleeping. She's kind of too wired now from everything. So you arrive in Lyon. Lyon is a beautiful city. It's one of the most wonderful cities in France for anybody who has never been. It was a former, it was originally um, built by the Romans. And to this day, there are still the remains of a Roman amphitheater um, along the hills of one side of the city. I was in Lyon. I just did the maths there. That's really depressing. It was like nearly 25 years ago. Good God, I'm getting old. Um, but um, it's a wonderful, s- small city, but really lovely. Very, The people are very friendly. It's very easygoing. And they do outdoor concerts in the amphitheater because that's what amphitheaters are built for. Okay? So, unfortunately, you don't get the time to enjoy any of this because you get... By the time you get to Leon that night, it's very late. It's like mm. half ten, nearly a quarter to eleven. Uh, because as I said, he's left at 10 and you were traveling for like 11 ish hours or thereabouts. Okay. Um, but he pulled the coach pulls up outside this very nice looking, um, hotel slash guest house called them, um, the, um, the Le, Le Grand hotel. Okay. Very simple name. Okay. It's very nice structure. It's like, a, it's like four stories high. Um, not like it's really nice not crazy super grand but it's still really really nice okay and getting off like none of you really have much by way of luggage you have like travel bags with you but none of you have big I think Aminata she has a case a small case with her not a proper luggage case she has a smaller case and then a travel bag but she's got the most luggage of all of you okay um, so the coachman lets you out and he helps with the lamb and a small case into the foyer and kind of leaning against the kind of reception desk kind of half asleep and then jolting awake when you come in you see this man he seems to be kind of short uh balding a uh, fairly heavy set guy with a gray trimmed beard like clo- like trimmed close to his face like mine is okay um and as soon uh, as you exit oh oh uh bonne nuit and he kind of I mean, just this handkerchief you didn't even realize in his hand because mops at his brow and as you get close you realize he's clearly one of these you know like some people they just sweat a lot mm. um and he is a very heavy set man you know with people who carry an awful lot especially men who are carrying a lot of extra weight they can be prone to sweating a lot he's one of those okay and like he's clearly someone who's constantly mopping at his brows at a point where there's nearly a sheen off of his bald forehead from constantly you know mopping out of the sweat of his brow with his handkerchief okay uh wearing a white linen shirt um and a dark brown waistcoat um it's just bon uh my name is louis chatel welcome to my hotel um i already had a letter from town you are obviously the ladies who are coming from Cherville. Well, 
Yes. Yep. That's yes, us. that's correct. Yes. Okay, cool. Well, um, it is quite late. I'm sure you must be very tired after. Oh, you came here straight from Sheffield. That's. Oh, you must have been all day. When, it's uh, been a long day. We would really appreciate some rooms, and uh, I'm uh, sorry for the late uh, hour. No, no, no. Of course, we have the we have rooms already for you all. Under twelve, that, yeah, decor. Okay, there's four. Yes, four rooms, and he needs oh, you upstairs. Our own rooms, he fancy. Rooms. Okay. Room, yes. So he needs you upstairs. Like, um, wh where is your luggage, Madame Wazels? Uh, We're traveling very light. It's just oh, that's fun. basically it. And I'm yeah. Okay. I mean, at this back, like you know. Takes up her her small case, and then um, like, okay, and um, he leads you up to each of the rooms, gives you each a key, and he's going. These are nice rooms, but they're not that big. Okay, right. so we're not talking ritzy sweets here. So you each have your own room. It's got a simple, nice um, double bed, okay, with simple, like, um, wrought iron frames. Um, very nice, simple quilted woolen sheets. Um, off the, there's a, there's, there's no, um, there's no wardrobes or anything in these rooms. Um, there is a privacy curtain, and then there's, like, a, um, like, ikea style you know curtain rail thing that you use yeah, yeah. If, if you are somebody who's who's cursed to live in a shitty 15 square meter apartment in dublin paying over two grand a month in rent then you don't have room for a wardrobe kind of job in there you know? yep. yeah yeah <laughs> so um and for you to hang any items that you might have there is a small dresser table but it's actually just a table like there's no drawers or anything mm -hmm. and then uh, there's a small mirror on it and then beside that there is your um um uh, ceramic uh basin with a jug of water underneath and then there beyond that the only thing underneath is the bed pants that's it these are very simple rooms this is a very nice hotel you clearly were given the cheap rooms yeah well this that's is still fancier <laughs> It's still fancier than anything Sylvia slept in. Uh, She's and, and, and you each have your own private room for the night, and it's all being paid for by uh, Mayor Swarfe. Exactly. So, uh, well, Sylvia's going to find a nice kind of spot for Piotr, so he because she doesn't know if he's if he's like aware. So she's kind of trying to. For still him. carrying the creepy marionette doll <laughs> that was formerly. I am still carrying yeah. this guy. I like. Oh Jesus! And like she's gonna just be like, oh, okay, so this is where we are staying, and I could put you over here, okay? I hope this is all right. And cause she doesn't know if he's there. Like, like I'm hoping that he's not, but just in case, I'm gonna talk to him and hopefully yeah. stave off him going completely fucking crazy. Uh, oh God, <laughs> even thinking about it makes me really upset. Mm, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. But so, so Sylvia has been like talking to him this entire like just kind of updating him like oh this is where we are now and oh this is so nice and you know no. and is there oh. a bar in this place neil or is um, it all it's again all for the night like yeah, as i said like it, it looks like he was the only one still up because it was quite fair. late okay cool head to bed so yeah mina cool. will put albert against the wall somewhere going like oh look this is really nice we got our own room what do you think of that and um yeah she'll put him against the wall so he's rested and then you know i mean she's gonna wash her face and just mm. you know wash her hands and things and then like yeah she's just gonna go to bed yeah. and then sylvia is obviously before she be blows out the candle she'd be like good night albert <laughs> yeah sylvia will be doing she'll be getting changed behind the privacy screen obviously spare Piotr like okay yeah okay. badness um so yeah and then same kind of like sleep well <laughs> <laughs> okay so my um, creepy friend <laughs> um, <laughs> darling honestly you all have a full night oh actually sorry one thing this is a mechanical thing sorry for you Gwyn all mm -hmm. right um your where is it sorry I need to pull up the staff for this now your one of your amulets is a witch's bottle yes which you've never actually had to use never because had to you use. have never been attacked by a magical attack from a fake creature no even, even when you were all fighting melisande in that fight she didn't actually attack you once no nope. um, no one i mean i think she i think she might have tried to hit you with the sleep spell maybe but mm. she was she was mostly gone for justine 
and yep. so Zustine had, had, had shattered the wand. Yeah. Okay, but um, yeah, so, but you do have your witch's bottle, okay? Yes. And, and the way it works is it absorbs damage from a spell attack equal to your resolve plus your magic plus your level. Now, mm -hmm. you can charge it with mana to increase this um, um, yeah. to, uh, to double that, okay? My mana is currently 40. Can I put that in the bottle tonight? Well, have a long rest, wake was, up tomorrow with 40 I was, mana? I was going to say you could have been doing that over the last few days while you were in well, Cherville. Yeah. So that means, so you have a, this is sorry, for, well, this is interesting, I suppose, for our viewers in terms of me how mechanics work. So you have a resolve of three and a magic of four, and you are six level. So that's three plus four is seven, plus six is 13. So that can be doubled to 26. So that the way it works mechanically is if you get hit by a magical attack the the witch's bottle will absorb up to 23 sorry 26 points of damage okay mm -hmm. um after it is uh, um the, the the 13 that you've charged into it your mana once that's gone it's it's then hit gone into the the standard 13 that are in it and that standard 13 that it holds that resets it down okay so you cool. don't um now the following day if you you would you then need to spend more mana to supercharge it but just just so we're aware of that okay so okay. Might, I'll, I'll... so does that mean um sorry 20 questions it always has a base of 13 in there always. for the moment uh, as a base of and fixed level and yeah yeah so then as your levels go up and as your resolve and magic scores go that up, will increase. it will increase okay. cool okay um, nice it's ominous that you're at telling me this now but okay no, i'm telling you this now because like it's just something that i keep meaning to say and um yeah i've never had um, reason to use it yeah you've never had to um um likewise the um the amnith the pendant that the three sisters in in the fey realm gave you you still don't know, oh, no, what that does. Does. i need justine to come back <laughs> It, it, whatever it does has not been activated by any scenario that you've mm, yes that's very true that's very so, true um, although actually now that i think of it that's wrong oh, uh, okay. we, we have to rest on something okay because i completely forgot you had that amulet um, yes because, and i wear it around my neck all the time with all my other bits and bobs so <laughs> we there's actually a slight rest exactly. tonight the night that you were facing the Lou Garo, when Juliet attacked you, yes. technically her first strike would not have landed. And there was mm. a flash of energy that stopped her claws from injuring you. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Apologies up now. In fairness, she did so much damage it wouldn't have made a difference. Yeah, I just know. Nearly dead. The fight. Um, <laughs> But just uh, that is a slight retcon. You did see. Mm -hmm. You did nearly die anyway, and I think you would have nearly died anyway. Um, it yep. you, uh, technically, you should have had an extra round before Gwyn or before Sylvia had to mm -hmm. stop you from dying. But um, so just a retconning there. There was an, when she struck at you with her first attack. There was a burst of light, and then you felt this magical wave come out and hit at her and prevented that first. Okay claw attack from coming through and it would have just prevented it not done any damage is just, that just that first attack okay. it prevented so mm. so there is a, there is a clue as to what it okay, might yeah. be, okay? Mm. so the next morning you get up um, um oh and you were also told details of of the train times you were told that there is a train leaving the arm um so the way this is working, you can't get the train directly from Lyon to Paris because it's just too far. Um, your the train that you're getting today will go to Dijon, um, which is north of Lyon. Okay, so uh, Lyon to Dijon, like it's 176 kilometers. It's a fair... mm -hmm. we, we forget how big France is. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> not. Yeah. And then yep. so and then from Dijon to Paris is this is as the crow flies is two hundred and sixty three kilometers. Wow. Okay. Like by the time you get from from Cherville to Cambrai, you will have traveled over four hundred kilometers. 
Wow. Yeah, by carriage, no less. <laughs> um, mostly by train, in fairness. Mostly by train, by train like, yeah. Um, so, so today, you were you had been told last night that the train, there's a train leaving um, the train station in Neon, and it'll be going to Dijon, and that will be at 10 o'clock in the morning, okay? Cool. Okay. Uh, so we go and have breakfast. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so you have a nice breakfast. It's fairly standard affair, you know. It's some bread, some cheese, some some cold cuts of meat um coffee of course because you were civilized um yes. so uh, a fairly standard fare not actually in in any way really that much nicer than what you would have gotten in the indian trivia yeah okay yeah. so um and then after that you get you're, you're given directions it's actually like a 10 minute walk to the train station from where you are there's not even any need to like jump in a hansom cab or anything like that um and you head to the train station okay mm -hmm. it's it's somewhat busy but not crazy busy i mean Lyon is a fairly big city in france and dijon is it's like a small city so it's still kind of busy enough you know there would be a fair bit of travel between the two but so you get to the you get to the train station okay um and you go to get your tickets now for this these tickets you um you do have to pay for yourselves um yeah i'll ask like if we can get direct tic big tickets up like you know um you'll you'll have to you, they'll only be able to sell your tickets from the dijon and dijon, dijon we have to buy another one okay cool, cool, cool. So, just give me one second i'm trying to where is it that's odd i don't see it here. And I tell to the guy like, "Oh yes, and I'll be traveling for class, please." In the hay. So, um, um, well, then, no. Um, so this is the thing. on the roof of the train. <laughs> you have money. Think of okay? Albert. You do actually have money. You're not. We should all have about thirty gold, right? Um, like, I'm not yeah, totally poor. Not, not quite. You don't. It's not quite 40. thirty gold. Um, I think most of you have like about twenty something gold, which is still like a lot, you know. I, mean, I think it was a bit more. I know I mute. spent some, so I have about thirty. We have two. about forty gold we, each okay. because we got work. we got twenty five from the ogre that's alone. Right. Okay, each. Yeah, that's right. And then from the mayor, and so, then we got ten from the, yeah. So we we definitely. So, um, more. that's. Um, hold on, sorry. I ha I have it here. So. A second class train ticket would be it'd be seventeen so it uh, would be seventeen silver. Um and a so a, a third class train ticket, which Gwyn has already said, I'm not going coach. I'm not I'm not no, yeah, okay? second class um, is fine. <laughs> so the way the tickets the way the tickets work is third class it's five copper per 10 kilometer and as i said it's 170 kilometers that you're traveling okay so that would be five times 17 which is uh, five times 20 is 100 so minus three 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 and three five okay. <laughs> it's 85, <laughs> it's 85, it is copper. 85 copper which is eight and a half silver okay um if you were to go third class and if you're going second class um that's um 170 copper or 17 silver 17 so silver. just under two gold okay i mean if you want to be really fancy you could go first class the first class nah. is first class is two silver per Perfect. 10 kilometers so it would be like 34 silver or no nah. you know no how does Amanata feel about second class? Is she okay with that? She's totally okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Then second it is. So yeah, looking around. I'm like, fine with second. So, like, so, so like, looking around, you, there's like there's maybe I don't know about 10, 15 people waiting around on the at the platform for the train. You see, there's um, a really sweet elderly couple. Um, there's there's a couple of guys that look like they're laborers. Maybe they're kind of down the down at the far end of the platform where when the train pulls in the third class carriages are going to be you know um the elderly cute elderly couple are in the second class are in the, the middle where you are where the second class carriages are going to be you see a very frazzled looking governess with three 
kind of bratty looking like preteen kids they are between the ages of nine and twelve and she's like no don't do that no come back here and like you know if, and there's you, you know that 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 kind of thing um you see uh, slightly more uh, d- down there that down there towards towards you know the first class carriages will be you see um a very very sh- a short elderly looking woman very very refined looking with silver hair car she's like leaning on a highly polished ebony cane um you see another guy kind of average height slightly heavier set where like his waistcoat is kind of straining around his belly and thinning hair and he's kind of like keeps taking out this very nice looking gold pocket watch looking at it and then a little bit further down you see this other you can't miss her okay this other woman strikingly beautiful oh fuck's sake go in very tall like about mm-hmm. about like mm-hmm. 180 centimeters so like tall you know like not crazy tall but like tall beautiful flaxen blonde hair oh for god's oh, sake sculpted cheekbones no brunettes in france she's wearing this this like beautiful like like day dress okay that just accentuates this incredible figure okay full bust coming down into a narrow waist and wide hips is like perfectly like perfect hourglass figure okay the dress is like it's just um this like royal blue and you can see it's decorated with lace and there's bits of embroidery and she's got like uh like like a brooch thing as well and and like you can see like the few men around they're all looking at her without trying to make it obvious that they're looking at her she knows they're looking at her this woman is stunning and uh, she's looking around as well waiting and as is she up in the first class area she, or oh, this woman is pure first, first class. class yeah yeah so yeah, where you are standing to put it into context relative to her you are kind of standing where you know this is where the second class carriage is going to be so she's about maybe seven or eight meters up from you so not like very far off mm-hmm. you know um but then like as you hear the sound of the train coming down towards you all and as she naturally as everybody does turn to look at it you do see her eyes land on the party and they mm. pause for a moment on you gwyn as she of course oh no slowly gives you an up and a down oh my gosh a slight, hey, Tony. A slight nod <sighs> and then just waits for her train so she only oh. looks at she only looks at <laughs> gwyn she glanced at everybody but she paused on gwyn of course Gwyn just kind of freezes and awkwardly turns and looks away. Sylvia has it been in your pants, will you? <laughs> Sylvia has been obviously was looking at her because you're like hmm, pretty lady, but you know Stunning. says after no, no, no. says says nothing. Sorry to interrupt you, Sylvia. Not pretty. Stunning. Okay. 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 Stunning. Okay. Stunning flaxen-haired like hourglass mm. figure i mean very much mommy sorry mommy sorry absolutely stunning okay how old is she uh looks to be maybe late 30s early 40s okay yeah right okay. Okay. late 30s early 40s okay um so yeah picture in your head gorgeous blonde woman with hourglass figure late 30s early 40s okay so marco dropi so um, well, much older, like Margot Robbie's in her know. 20s. But, um, but no, very different. Like Margot Robbie's a very kind of slender athletic build. This woman mm, is true. a pure woman, okay? Like, she is a womanly figure. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, um, okay. So anyway, the train stops. You all alight. You're sitting down, okay? Um, you're in second class. It's nice enough. There's maybe about another 10 odd people. Well, not much. Sorry. In the carriage that you're in, there's probably been another three or four people and there's like there's three third class carriages there's like um three second class carriages and then you know what the, there'll be there's two first class carriages and there'll be a, there's a dining area for the first class and then there is like a, a small dining carriage for the second class as well the third class peasants can go hungry okay um so <laughs> So yeah, you guys chill, looking around. Um, nothing really exciting happening at all. Does anyone want to get a? Again. Does anyone want to get a drink in the? 
First class first dining class. hall? No, thank you. <laughs> no, no, there we're not allowed there, there. We're peasants. <laughs> there is a second class. Uh, There's a second class. Uh, dining yeah. Marriage, okay? yeah. I know um, what you're up to. Um, Sylvia is, yeah, sure. We're not doing anything else. And yeah, it's a long, it's to a do. long journey. So let's yeah, I mean, go. Just yeah. to, to put it into context, okay. Sorry, just give me one second. I didn't tell you how long this train journey is going to be. One second, one divided by 25. And um, this train journey from Lyon to Dijon, um, if you were going direct, would be 6.8 hours. It's going to be closer to like um, eight, eight and a half hours because there's stops along wow. the way, obviously. Yeah. No, it's okay. not an express. It's stopping in about um, four or five little, like not little, but towns along the way. So it's got like, like as I said, it's a, a like an a, a eight, eight and a half hour journey is what you're expecting. So you're going to get into Dijon at probably sometime between six and seven in the evening. Okay. So long day. Yeah. So yet, so yet again, you're going to have to find accommodation in Dijon. And then, um, Aminad has already told you that when you get to Paris, you can just stay at her family home. Oh, brilliant. So you, know, okay. you, you won't need to worry about, about that. She, okay. That's brilliant. Okay. She, she, well, I want something to do for the next eight hours. So let's go and maybe get have some a drink. Food. Yeah, mm -hmm. just uh, while the time away, I'll probably do a bit of studying my book of shadows after that. Oh, okay. So you guys go off. Um, you go into the into the carriage. They There's like a young woman there. Where, um, like there's a small little kind of, it's a really tiny little like, bar if you get yeah. what i mean and then beside that there's a small little section with like a small little kind of skillet the um there's like a, a skillet type grill thing where they can make up simple dishes um you know that you and you, you'd know this well maybe you don't know this but um sylvia um and, and mina being from the mainland would know this that these trains actually the the, the like the skillet and grills that they use to cook their food um, they're not using. They don't use fire or gas or oil. It's all done using magic. Ooh, so cool! It's, it's a lot safer. It's like it's basically mm -hmm. the equivalent of mm -hmm. an electric cooker. Um, mm -hmm. There's no open flame or anything like that. Okay. So, oh, my favorite! No open flame. Very happy about this. <laughs> So, yeah. so you, go and you, you, you go and you sit down, and the young, mm -hmm. young woman comes up to you both, and she's like, um. Can I um? Can, uh, would you what would you like? Would you like some tea, some coffee? Um, are you hungry? Can I get a gin and tonic, please? Would that be possible? Mm, D'accord. Um, uh, yeah. one gin and tonic, and for yourself, Mademoiselle. Oh, I would just like some coffee for now. Kind of looking at going with like it's a bit early, isn't it? No, not on a journey. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So. Um, yeah, since I am wearing my dress uniform rather than the. Yeah normal like you know fighting outfit mm -hmm. um but yeah i'll be i'll be saying the same you know me and i have to keep up appearances so i'm like um yeah i have some coffee as well please thank you and it's good to meet you said that you've got your dress uniform on because having the dress uniform on means you're carrying ha um, albert around but in, like you're getting like odd looks and second glances but they because they see this fucking pole arm that you're carrying but then they see you're wearing your dress uniform they can yeah. see Okay, this is a member of the Swiss Guard. It's like I'm not wearing my armor or whatever, or the, no, you know, mean the usual. Uniform, but yeah, it's a jacket. formal uniform, dress so, uniform, so, 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 which so. is actually a skirt, guys. So um, a nice kind of army. Mm -hmm. Chapter, kind of like, like a walking skirt like what Sylvia yeah, has on. yeah well it's a skirt skirt but like it's um do you know what I mean like mm -hmm. it's because it's a dress uniform it's not intended for fighting yeah. oh. and um the women wear um skirts but you know what I mean it is like an army jacket kind of yeah, cut, yeah. cut mm -hmm. and um yeah a nice like long kind of swooshy oh, okay skirt that the women mm -hmm. wear for riding kind of that's what you know mm -hmm. that was designed and some nice boots with it but like yeah with the kind of shoulder parts of the whole thing and you know, you know the okay. flares and stuff on it like yeah so okay. sylvia would have had something like that mm. as well yeah. hey, sylvia's except sylvia would have had trousers yeah of course yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, also sylvia was just a grunt so like yeah. Um, so um, yeah, you sit down. You 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 have your gin and tonic. You're having your coffee. So, have you been on a train much? Not particularly. 
Um, I mostly came by carriage across and then eventually hopped on a short train and then another carriage. I was actually meant to go to Paris. Um, that's where I was aiming for, but there were just diversions on the road and I found myself in Cherville. So um, it's good to be finally heading where I was supposed to be going. I'm excited to see yeah, the city. Well, we won't see the city much, but certainly on the way back, uh, whatever yeah. happens, we can certainly spend a little bit more time in Paris. I know, Mina, you're, you're probably very eager to see your brother. I, I do understand. Um, I, of course, I, that will be our first priority. Uh, you know, family is, is everything, really. Um, yeah. Sylvia is kind of like, she's trying not to hide. Like she's or trying to hide like she's unbelievably happy, but still a little bit kind of emotional, a little bit shaky. She's trying to hide that a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm, I'm just hope he's okay, you know? Well, the spell would not have worked if he was not alive. Exactly. So, when we get to Cambrai, uh, can, can can you ca you can cast the spell again? I think. Yeah, I can cast can it again. It. We can do it today. We can do it tomorrow. Whenever, if you want to, just be sure he's still in the same place. And then, when we get closer to Paris, we'll be able to pinpoint his location better. And oh, the spell will become more detailed. It becomes more localized. And then, when you're in Cambrai, <laughs> when you cast it again, the map becomes more detailed. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, where you're casting it now, because mm -hmm. of the distance you you are from your target, it's the the iron filings form a, a map of like France. But mm. if you're in a town or city, then it will, the iron filings will form a map of the town or city, or yeah. maybe even um, um, the neighborhood of the town or city. You know, oh, I mean, if, if we will find him, it's it's going to be okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. so yeah, you guys can like chill for as long as you want. Uh, I'm gonna is basically is going for a nap and where she's seated. And, you know, so, like, <laughs> she wearing yeah. the ring. I just have visions of Amanada <laughs> closing all oh, sorts shit, of shit. No, she's too good to cause trouble. Is she is she yeah. traveling with us? We don't even know. <laughs> so, Speak um, about you guys, are, ch you guys um. are chilling for a while, Gwyn. You eventually take out your book of shadows to have a look over. Yeah. Or, okay. We might I might do one more spell with iron filings just for Mina's sake, just to be sure that he is the same in the same like in Absolutely. Paris, you yeah. know. So you take out your the sheet of parchment, you sprinkle the iron filings, you take out your pendulum and you cast the spell. And same as before, it forms into the Iron Flames form into a map um, of kind of northern France, highlighting the town of Cambrai with some of the Iron Flames spelling out the name of the town, and the pendulum is focusing over that. Okay, good. Okay. So he's still there, he's not moving. Um, this is good. When you do that, okay, so when you cast that spell, all right, um, you, you're focusing on it. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, just one second. Apologies. Um, when you hear a voice inside your head, Gwyn. Oh. Okay. And the voice goes, hmm, I thought you were a witch. All those bags. That magic is so interesting. I'd love to talk. <sighs> you just see, oh! you guys don't hear anything, but you just see Gwyn like, jump in her chair and um just go like weirdly silent um and she just says back hello well, who is you oh i have to see yeah the i have to see the targets i can't yeah. okay but um that, the target also weird. has to see you oh weird yeah so whoever just okay. said that cantrip must be That's... in your line of sight Oh. So I look around and who do I see? Obviously Mina and Sylvia. Yes. And then standing, just having entered into the um, second class dining carriage, is the stunning blonde woman that you <gasps> saw on the platform. Oh God. And as, you, as your eyes meet her, she just gives you a smile and a wink. Okay. Grand. That's terrifying. She's in my head. Um, you, just, you guys just perceive Gwen going really like stiff and awkward 
<laughs> I'm like, are you okay? Has the chin got um, to your head already? <laughs> that's not what's gotten to my head. <laughs> Sylvia's kind of looking around, following Gwen's eyes. So presumably, she sees this I'm, woman. Uh, well. Yeah, you just see me like, around, and you also see this us, gorgeous blonde that you all saw oh. on, on the um, on the um, on the the, the platform. So okay. If so... you if you wish to reply, Gwyn, it's um your magic score plus your level. So you can send a reply of up to ten words. Ooh, okay, I have ten. Um I'll just say Oh hello. for fuck's sake, not this again. <laughs> say, uh, hello. Oh. <laughs> um this one's definitely able to look after herself. I'm not worried. Yeah, she's kind of scary <laughs> already. Um, <laughs> I'll just say hello. What's your name? <laughs> that's it. Is that it? That's it. Gwen's kind of sh like surprised, you know. Give She's me kind of shocked. Um, give me an intellect roll, Gwen, because you are kind of shocked. I want to see. If yeah, I'm because I'm not like the only person who really has done that for the last couple of weeks with Sylvia. Gwen is Sylvia. So she just hearing this other voice in her head is kind of disconcerting. Yeah. Oh, I rolled a five. Yay! What did you say? Intellect. Yeah. So that's a seven total. Okay, never mind. My name is Josephine Gautier. Would you like to join me in first class? Gwyn just looks <laughs> at Sylvia and um, looks back at, what was her name? Julianne? Josephine. 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 I need to write that down. Uh, jo Josephine. Um, Gwen just turns to Josephine and says out loud. Um, um, bah, bah, bah. It's rude to, uh, I feel it's rude of me to uh, have a conversation that my friends can't hear. So um, nice to meet you, Josephine. I'm Gwen. And these are my friends, Sylvia and she, Mina. At, at this stage, she's walked down to where you're seated. And you can all see her now. Up close, she is even more beautiful looking than she was from seven, eight meters away. These okay. striking kind of gray-green eyes. Okay. Um, and she's got these kind of like laughter lines around her eyes as well. As you, And as you say that, she, she kind of smiles a little bit. And when she does her like nose crinkles in that really cute way that it, sometimes with some women, she's like... But it's so wonderful to meet you, Gwyn. Sorry, you just um, you struck my attention when we were waiting for the train to arrive. I was wondering if you'd like to, um, as I said, join me in first class. We could maybe get to know each other. Um, only if my friends can come too. I'm not accustomed to leaving them on their own. Sylvia is just going to give Gwen a look because, you know, referencing the conversation they had had the other day with that. See, I told you nobody would even look at me if you were there. <laughs> Gwen is too um, afraid to respond in case Josephine hears. <laughs> so she just awkwardly sits there and says nothing. Um, yes, of course, if you'd like to all join me, that's not a problem. Oh, the, well, I wouldn't want to impose. I, I know. Same, but... I'm. I'm... Yeah, no. Gwen just but, elbows but you go, Sylvia. You go along. Uh, <laughs> um, well, it looks like your friend. Sylvia uses her cantrip. Like, he's interested in you, not us. <laughs> like, and you uh, just hear back, she's terrifying. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, lo lo looking, at, looking at the drink, she kind of she leans down slightly um, towards you and says, I promise you, the gin is far nicer in first class. Oh, I've no doubt. I've no doubt. Uh, well, shall we? And I look at Sylvia. <laughs> shall we, <laughs> Sylvia? Um, Sylvia, are you Sylvia. going to get up or are you just like, no, fuck you, Sylvia. you're on your own? <laughs> no, Sylvia is kind of... Well, Sylvia is going to say, why do you want us to go as as well but as she's well going to very <laughs> oh as well as two words. it's terrifying <laughs> two words as well as two words not the way i spell it mm, it's the way you spell it's wrong <laughs> yeah you just hear back 
um, actually, you don't hear anything back because Gwen is still afraid. That, no, no, that Syl Sylvia, Sylvia is going to her. very slowly start getting up, but she did say that to Gwen. Okay. <laughs> so, are you, are, you, are you all getting up? No, yeah, I'm getting up too, but I'm heading back to Aminat. Okay, I'd be so like, I'll enjoy your time. Thank you so, so much for Nina, doing with me. Thank you. Oh. So, Sylvia, are you going or are you? Um... Sylvia is coming, aren't you? Sylvia, Sylvia is going to be Captain Third Wheel. This is going to be Yay. great. Oh, um, fuck. So. So, no, I'm gonna go to Aminata, so, so, tell her to put the ring on and go spy on you. See, yeah. see, see, so this is what happens. So seeing, seeing like your like kind of tenseness, um, mm -hmm. Josephine just gently lays a, a hand on your upper arm and giving it a, the slightest squeeze says, "Don't worry, my dear. I don't bite." <laughs> unless you want me to. Okay. Well, uh, unless you ask. Um, um, you know, you wouldn't be the first, so yeah. Oh, Sylvia is looking at Gwen using the lesser telepathy. Are you are you sure you want me there too? Gwen is not going to respond in case Josephine hears. So, <laughs> not how that cantrip works. <laughs> she is in a complete panic. Josephine steps back to Why? allow you to get out from your seats um, and gestures for you to. Um, for you to go ahead of her. Uh, because this lady's been like weird. <laughs> is she? She just yeah. likes you. Mm, so, no, uh, it's weird. So Gwen... She just likes you. Gwen is really beautiful. She just likes her. Like, yeah, she... mm. calm down. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> Gwen, are you going to go with this woman? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. And Sylvia, do you follow as well? Yes, but like against my better judgment and i don't want to be a third wheel and i'm like making this very clear to gwen like why do you want like she just keeps saying why do you want me here to <laughs> just to just kind of keep saying that because like she okay. clearly when just turns around is interested in and gwen, says not interested in sylvia like um so um uh, this is what happens as you are stepping through along the, the 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 aisle of the second class carriage you go open the door and pass in to what is the first class dining carriage as you are stepping through you both gwyn and sylvia you both at the same time sylvia you're turned back looking at gwyn so you can use your lesser telepathy cantrip to communicate and gwyn you are seeing sylvia who's like just a, a fraction in front of you you both look as your clothing suddenly changes into no. what basically looks like more expensive, nicer, fancier versions of what you are wearing. Okay. More okay. in line with what okay. people in first class would be wearing. Okay. And okay. you are you continue on and Josephine gestures to an empty set of tables and says, hey, please sit down. And you guys sit down. And you both so look at, I'm. You can. I'm see still covered. I'm still. I'm still covered up. No, it's stuff, literally right? as if somebody took the the clothing, the dresses that you're wearing, but instead they were of higher quality, finer fabrics with better cut, oh, yeah. and in a more modern, more fashionable style of cut with extra like lace decoration and all of the other um accoutrement that would make them more expensive higher class versions of what you're wearing so gwen like turns to sylvia to make sure she's okay because obviously with her burns she wouldn't no, want to be wearing like, anything there's nothing exposed it's literally a somebody just made you guys look like you're wearing bling okay so after she kind of checks sylvia she just is going to turn to josephine and say well that's a neat trick Oh, yes. Well, I mean, you know, they can be a bit stricter. And this is she's saying that the conductor's coming along and he's like stopping everybody and he gets your table and he's like, um, sorry, Madame Ozell, is there tickets, please? And she just gestures at the table and you see three first class tickets. And she's like, there you go, Monsieur. Um, but, um, if you please, my, my friend here, she has a bit of a headache. Um, I said, oh, of course, Madame Ozell. And because um, he's like, this is the very fancy looking woman. And then um, as he turns to leave, the tree tickets disappear. And I think that is a perfect place to pause in our story.
Okay, so we will be back in like two minutes. People are just going to take a quick fire break and I need to get a, I think I'm moving from the tea to the wine, but we'll be back very, very shortly <laughs> and we can find out a bit more about this mysterious, stunning video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I need to get a drink. It's going to get me through this. Oh, I am <laughs> sure she conned herself onto first class. Like, you know what I mean? This is <laughs> so, no, this is the thing like, well, you don't know, but this woman... Well, certainly when she was right well, on on the platform looked pure first class mm. and yeah she... looked perfect yeah. you know okay. that doesn't mean yeah. a fucking thing well <laughs> regardless let us take a quick break and we'll be back to you all soon folks okay so back in like less than five minutes okay okay
Okay, folks, and we are back. Is everything... Uh, are my captions working? There's a bit of a delay. Okay, yes, there's a bit more of a lag, but we are back. So, when last we left our heroes, the party was on the train from Lyon to Dijon on part of their quite long journey to the town of Cambrai. This is a town or city, you're not sure which, that is very far north, approximately 40 kilometers from the Belgian border. They are going here because Gwyn, the party witch, had cast a spell that revealed that Mina's brother is in this location. They are currently sitting in the first class dining carriage of the train, having been invited here by an alluring and stunningly beautiful woman who seems very interested in Gwyn who seems to be completely overcome by gay panic. So, yes. returning <laughs> to our heroes, the woman who had introduced herself as Josephine Gautier, she gestures to one of the servers, and, and as the, woman, the, the young woman comes up to you all, she says, um, so, Gwyn, would you like another gin and tonic? Yes, please. That would be and, wonderful. And I'm sorry, please forgive me. And your name is gesturing to Sylvia. Um, I am Sylvia. Um, so, but just coffee is fine for me. Thank you. That's a, a Berlin accent. Yes. Yeah, uh, I am from there originally. And yourself, Gwen, I can't quite tell your accent. It seems like it is somewhere from in Britain, but it's certainly not London. It's certainly not Birmingham. Where exactly is it you're from? That's a good guess. Most people would have no idea. I'm from the Southwest. I'm more well-traveled than most people. So, you must be. And she turns back to the, to the maid who's like standing away. Um, I will have a, 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 a Cabernet Sauvignon and a gin and tonic water and a cafe. And the was like, yes, ma'am. And she heads off to get the drink. So... I must say, you're quite the interesting group, but you were hard not to spot while we were waiting for the train to arrive. It's not often you'd see a quartet of women like yours, you know? Um, uh, someone African, though not from the north of Africa, Algerians, like we'd see more commonly here in France. And, you know, um, clearly, if you, if I may be so bold, a witch, was, you're kind of easy to spot with all the trinkets that you carry on. You okay, the way. Um, <laughs> And your friend, I don't think I've ever seen a member of the Swiss Guard who is so short in all of my life. Oh, that's well, Armina. Short but mighty. Don't be fooled she's by her. Very, very skilled and very strong. And I am sure she's very strong, but still think that, the, you know, they train to fight giants and she looks like she could maybe come up to a giant's waist. Uh, no, we've yeah, seen well, fighting. she can it's hack off her leg with her halberd, and we did fight an ogre, and she was quite effective. Oh, so some of the some some um, some of men's most vulnerable parts are at waist height. So. It's true. <laughs> that is true. Convenient for us. And um, yourself, my dear, what what exactly is your tale, if you do not mind me asking? Well, but, as you very uh, astutely guessed, uh, I am from Cornwall, and that's where my family hails from. We go back generations there and um i guess i'm here for adventure and really? to experience the continent even though it is dark times after the war it i didn't was, quite expect it was, when i was 19 to be heading out to a war-torn uh continent but here we are it was a troubling time so are all of your family witches do you come from a line of casters i do yes i come from a line of female casters going all the way back and what of yourself, gesturing to Sylvia, um, what skills, if I may be so bold, I'm just so curious with your group, um, are, oh. you, are, are, you a, are you a spellcaster as well? Are you a, a warrior like your Swiss friend? Um, oh, no. In another life, I was a soldier, but I'm a druid now. Oh, how fascinating. The druids are quite a lovely group. The way they... It's, it's actually quite funny, actually, a druid and a witch. You both get your magics through your connections with nature, but in very different ways. Mm. I, 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 um, my, my background is I'm actually an artificer. 
Ah, I was wondering oh. because you know the illusions that you could cast and and oh, that is a fun little trick. Um, when the conductor came by, I don't mean to be rude, but he would have made a, a fuss um, seeing you here. Of course, of course. Uh, I absolutely do not belong here looking at Gwen pointedly. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about yourself, Josephine. Where do you come from? Oh, I'm, I'm from all from all over. Um, Funny, you're the second person in a few days who's told us that very thing. Um, can I detect where her accent may be from? No, it's really hard to tell. Um, okay. and, and of course, in the 19th century, France was still very regional in its languages. We're talking post Enlightenment period, so they had really been trying to crush all of the local dialects of French as well as the unique individual languages, like like Breton, for example. And um, she has a very mixed accent. You know, one minute you're thinking, well, actually, you wouldn't know because you don't know France. You've only come into France, so you would not be able to tell. Sylvia, likewise, you could. If Amanada was at the table, she could maybe guess because she was raised in France. But you two haven't got a chance. But oh, it is a French accent. Oh, she is French, definitely okay. French. Okay. okay. Um, I am not going to do a French accent, so I'm doing a <laughs> mild, softly British accent because this Perfect. woman is so extra. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so no, definitely French. Okay. As an artificer, I'm sure that you can make many amazing magical items then. Um, yes, most of what we artificers make are trinkets, though I have got some experience in more powerful industrial magics. I spend my time between mm -hmm. Paris and Lyon. Um, I have um, stores and workshops in both cities. Um, so, and I have contracts. I sometimes making arcanely powered pistons and engines for industrialists in both areas um, as well as of course the everyday um, I would be quite a successful artifice mm, um, weirdly Gwen thinks to herself um, she doesn't say this to Sylvia but Gwen thinks to herself hmm, pity she's not a man make of that what you will hmm. um, and she man. does and she does oh. ask, uh, what's the name of your um, your shop? We are heading to Paris, so it would be, maybe we'll have the opportunity to call in. Um, oh, my shop. Oh, um, it's just Gautier's Wonders. Lovely. You know, we are staying in a small village. Um, and good Magitech is very hard to come by. Yeah. If you were looking for me, I'm in the third arrondissement of the city. So, um, you know, um, I, I'd be very interested um, to ask you some more if you're interested in these things. Um, yes, definitely. Uh, so you, 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 you're from a small village or you have just come from a small village? Oh, I'm from quite a large port town, actually, uh, in Cornwall. It's called Exeter, but we're staying in a small village at the moment. I was originally bound for Paris, but... The fates threw me into a tiny village called Cherville, which is where I met my traveling companions. So it hasn't been all bad. Cherville, um, Cherville, Cherville. Have you heard of it? It's very provincial. I think vaguely sounds familiar. Isn't there a large forest near there? Yes, the Tronquet Forest. It has caused us no end of troubles. Really? Uh, how come? Yes. Yeah. There's been a huge amount of fey activity in the area. The elven residents of the forest seem to be calling them to her. Um, and it's just caused a lot of disruption for the locals. An elf, you say? There's very few of them left in France since the revolution. Very few, yes, yes. Fascinating. So you are quite a band of adventurers then, yes? I suppose you could say that, yes. <laughs> yes, thrown together by the fates. Quite fortuitous because as an artificer i'm often looking for adventures to do work for me well i'm sure we could make a bargain if you had any magitech that maybe we need i'm sure we could do some trades our skills for your technology well uh, i do actually i am looking for some people 
looks like it would cost a factory worker six to 12 months of their of their wages, you know? So mm. this little leather pouch hanging from a fine belt around her waist looks out of place. But wow. yeah. she reaches in and then she takes out um, a pen and takes out a piece of paper. And you're looking at like a, the piece of paper that she takes out. It's like it's a small piece of paper, maybe A5, okay? And the pen. And you're like, like that's weird. You don't carry pens in. <laughs> She's got a goblet purse. I want one. Me <laughs> too. In beautiful, wonderful joint handwriting, she writes Gautier's Wonders and the address of her shop in the third arrondissement. And then folding it up, she places it in your hand, Gwyn. So she doesn't hand it to you. She takes your hand and places it in your hand. And oh, she, beautiful. I mean, wonderful. I mean, the, thank you. And, yeah. and, and as she does, you you can feel it. her skin is so soft. Oh. <laughs> Sylvia is so just nice. watching this going, what the fuck am I doing here? Mm -hmm. Jesus Gwyn's Christ. mouth is just like a little bit like... Your she's just staring at her. She's like, yeah, "Oh my god!" Suddenly, so dry. Yeah, so dry. So no dry. words come out. No words. No words. Oh god! Green just like keeps her hands there as long as Josephine <laughs> wants. So, um, so this, so is her. She or asks if you'd like um, some another drink or some food or whatever. Um, she's happy to keep talking to you. And like she's, she asks you about what was happening in Cherville, interested to hear the stories of your exploits. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, oh, Sylvia is gonna like talk Gwyn up. Um, oh, thank you. Because <laughs> so, Gwyn uh, can't talk to herself right now. <laughs> so Sylvia is just like, oh finally somebody who's clearly interested in just a little bit of fun and isn't some poor innocent fucking farm girl who uh -huh. gwen whose heart's gwen's gonna break this woman is gonna be fine with gwen upping and leaving <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's yeah. this is fine so she's just gonna like <laughs> sylvia's very much like gwen kind of go for it this is a great idea i think it'll do you some good you know as we're telling stories of our exploits like sylvia is going to be really emphasizing on how it's going to, when we talk about dubois we talk about how like um when sylvia cast the spell and it was just to kind of take him down a peg because he was so fucking arrogant and annoying um and like how she got like horribly attacked by the werewolf, but leaving out that like she uh, leave out the details, <laughs> <laughs> leaving out the details. But you know, thankfully the werewolf was too young to pass on the curse, and you know, um, the ogre the when the when poor um, Mina was getting eaten, like Gwen was there with her wand of blasting, and absolutely just so Sylvia is, you know. Fucking go for it. I do not need to be here. I do not Best want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amazing. you know, yeah, it's, it's, she is all about doing that. So, okay, right. Okay. Um, That's a poor innocent farm girl. So you can go nuts. It's not That's like what it's, makes her so scary. It's not Marie <laughs> or poor Juliet. So, like, absolutely go for it. Uh huh. Okay. Um... How is she reacting to this? Is she kind of thinking, oh, wow, Gwen, you're so. She... Gwen, you're so amazing. She is very impressed by what you're saying, you know, um, very much so. Um, but, um, and, like, she is listening. And when you're talking about, like, Dubois, for example, she's like, oh, yes, I've, we've all met men like that. And, you yep. know, um spends a lot of time with the widows you know if you catch my meaning oh yes i i'm well aware of men like that mm. um they're never quite as impressive as they think they are um, <laughs> true but yes so as you are having this conversation you hear just a little bit further up um from where you were um you suddenly hear um, a sound of an infant crying, a baby. 
okay? Uh. And looking up towards the other end, you see a, a, um, a, a well-dressed young woman, um, average height, slender build, um, wearing a lovely dark green dress, you know, not quite as fancy as what Josephine is wearing, but still clearly looks like she belongs in first class. And she's leaning over into a little kind of a Moses style basket and there's a child crying. She's like, oh, what's wrong, Ralph? What's wrong? What's wrong? It's like, what? Hey, wait, where's your rattle gone? And she see her like she's looking around in his like blanket and stuff as her, clearly her young son is, is crying. It's like, and she's looking around at, at like, what the hell? As, um, and then at the same, at roughly the same time, you hear off to one side, and this slightly more a middle-aged man, like well, later middle-aged man, just kind of gets up and shows like, he's got an average height, um, slightly heavy set. Um, uh, you'd seen him on the uh, at the platform. The guy was waistcoat training and and um, thinning hair. And he's like, "Where's my watch?" <laughs> and the guy you'd seen him, like fiddling with the, the with the gold. I was like, "What? What?" What the, the hell? My, my watch is gone. Oh no! When, okay. When when this happens, Sylvia's kind of going to start. She's just going to reach inside. She's uh, just feeling around to make sure that she's still wearing all her stuff. All your possessions are still there. I'm going to do the same. Check all my amulets and bags. I want to. I want to also check in my bag because there's something I want to make sure is still there. Every item that you own, Sylvia, is still there. Okay. When you're um, checking through your witch's bottle, your rabbit's foot, all of your amulets are still there. You look into your purse, um, your money still there. You're looking around, everything should be there. And you notice one thing is missing. <gasps> the letter from Juliet is missing. Oh my gosh. Are my letters still there? My letters are all, all still there. All your possessions are still there, Sylvia. Okay. Oh, this is in my book of shadows. Okay. Your book of shadows um, is still there. It's still there. Okay. Whew, on, okay. The letter. The letter is gone. Um, Gwen jumps up and um says something's gone. Something really important. What's what's going on here? Uh, can I do um a little check? Do I see anything? Do I see a watch floating in thin air? Yeah, or give me an awareness roll. Okay. Oh jeez. Um, that was a four. My awareness is one. I, I see nothing. <laughs> As Josephine puts her hand on your arm and says, wait, wait, Gwyn, what's missing? Is it? A really important letter. Um, a letter? What the? It was in my book of shadows. I don't know how that's gone and everything else is still here. That's all of so my strange. All of my things are still here. Um, what a thing to steal i mean i don't understand see, mutter some arcane words and there's a flash and you see a flash of silver across her eyes she's casting true sight as she looks uh, uh, she's looking around and she suddenly reaches out with one hand gesturing in the direction of the elderly woman that you had seen earlier who's sitting down and as she reaches you hear a squeal a cry like, no! not from the woman from thin air Mm. As she's she as as Josephine is reaching out with one hand, and um, as I say, as, jo as Josephine is reaching out with one hand, you do the squeal of no, and um, then with a wave of her other hand, and you see a shimmer of magic coming out. You see appearing, floating in the middle of the air. You mm. see a figure. All right. A one moment, please. I'm about to cremate this thing, whatever it is. <laughs> it, um, I'm being told that I can't be heard in chat. Um, that's oh. weird. You guys can all hear me, yeah? What? Can other? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can other people in chat hear me? Okay, sorry. Okay, must have been the mic skirting out for a second. Thanks, Pat, for letting me know. Um, so, appearing in front of you is a goblin. It's about to be an ex-goblin, if he doesn't so, give me that letter yes, back. Um, appearing in front of you is a goblin. Um, they're like, and you've seen him before. You, you, you've, you've, you've seen one or two before. Short creatures, like a little over a meter in height. 
Um, oh, Sylvia's seen loads. Sylvia, you've seen lots of goblins um, in the war. So short, about a meter tall, wearing a brilliantly vibrant blue, like royal blue jacket with red trim, a vibrant green waistcoat. Like goblins, like other fae, love bright colors. Um, crisp white and in short, short black trousers that come to the knee and then white socks that come up and brightly polished black shoes wearing this kind of small soft red one and pointed conical cap over them young kind of cherubic features and uh, the golden eyes that goblins have almost cat like eyes that is that they that is common for them and you can see in one hand he just reached for and plucked this cameo brooch from the old woman she, she cries out she's reserved and she would her with, uh, with, with, with quite impressive reflex such an elderly woman her takes her can and snaps it down onto his hand like you beast that was a gift from my husband and the the the, the cameo brooch like drops from the creature and, like, ah, sir, it, 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 and he's looking when at Andrew's <laughs> fireball like you, you're about to be cremated how close is how, right how, how close is going to silver fireball, right? she's not being for the mountain fireball or firebolt because you don't uh, have Firebolt. Firebolt. Firebolt is third fire level. Bolt. You haven't gotten there yet. Yes, and, I don't. And I wouldn't recommend casting Fireball in the enclosed space of a yeah, train. Yeah, a carriage. Or, yeah, that would be bad. Look, Gwyn is enraged, so, you know, and she's like, angry Gwyn. Sylvia, Sylvia jumps away from Gwyn when she casts yeah. that. Because, um, but... You see Josephine's hands curl as if she's, like, squeezing at something. And you hear the goblin, like, squeak. He's like, ah, no, I'm... I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I sorry. I'll merd. <laughs> he's like, and he's like, it looks like he's been Drop like, everything crushed. now. No, he can't move. He's like, he's it's like he's being crushed by an invisible force. He's literally floating and being held in the air as she has a hand out, and she says to him, "Now, that was a particularly unpleasant thing to be doing. Seriously, who steals a toy from a babe?" You will, you will relieve yourself of the items that you have taken now and if you do I will be so kind as to and you see he goes he kind of scours at her and he goes to he do something and you see his form shimmer for a second and she, ah, ah, and she flings out her hand again dispelling whatever magic he was about to use to try to escape as I no 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 you are a Picked the wrong carriage, mon ami. Now, you will return the items that you have taken, and then I will let you blink out of here. And he kind of, you see his hands kind of free a bit, and he kind of rummages around, and he drops this little silver baby's rattle, and then he drops this the gold watch that the gentleman had obviously had, and then finally a piece of paper flutters down onto the table. Gwyn grabs it and well, just clutches it. Bit, okay, and he goes, that's all I took, that's all I took. I was just having some fun, I was bored, the train pulled up, I thought this would be fun. I promise, that's it. For is your that sake, it? Maybe we should turn him upside down and shake him, just to be sure. For your sake, I hope it is, because, you know, a oh, goblin got into our camp once. I, and then she's going to look at the elderly woman and like, oh, maybe I should not tell that story here. The quick version is the goblin was very unhappy for a very long time and most of him got away. Um, most Sylvia, of him. So I want you to, I know this is, these aren't your stats, but I'm going to Whoa. give it to you anyway. This is intimidation, so this is a charm oh. based roll. I know oh, no. Not, I know it's not your thing, but you know, we'll, maybe you'll roll well. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I will. I'm just, I'm just making sure my. She should wear the bonus because she has a German accent. Yes. True. <laughs> everything sounds German, like everything, everything sounds, sounds menacing. Apparently, in a German. Yeah, that is true. Yes. <laughs> Sylvie is actually a big softy. Like. <laughs> well, roll for me anyway. We'll see how we get on here. Okay, so I rolled a fifteen. My charm is one, so that's a sixteen. Okay, is that? You can tell he's clearly he's like, I have cousins who were in, fought in the war. I didn't, but I, I, okay. Um, that's everything. I promise. Mm -hmm. I, I give you my word. I know from my kin that doesn't necessarily mean much compared to other fae, but 
I genuinely, this is all I took. Okay. I didn't have, I didn't have time to take any more. Lucky well, for you. Fine. The gods are kind today, as it, it seems. Uh, so, mm. jo so, Josephine, looking looking at you, Gwyn, to check, are you okay? Mm. Oh, I'm fine. Yeah, I grabbed the letter and, like, I'm weirdly, like, clutching this yeah, piece so, of paper, so, like, really she, tightly you to you my chest. tell she pauses, like, checking for Mona, you're okay, and seeing that you're, like, upset. Yeah, I'm, like, face. I'm calming down, like, very angry, but now calming. Yeah. Okay, mon ami. You can go. And she doesn't release her grip, but he suddenly vanishes, turn and in, in, like literally disappears and is gone. And um, the young woman, the mother, she rushes up, she takes the baby rattle, the elder the more elderly man, he's like kind of getting up, he kind of blustery, and it's like, you know, he's like Thank you very much, madame. Um, and takes his pocket watch and the elderly woman, she's like, Thank you very much, my dear. That was a that was a gift from my late husband. And she puts the cameo brooch back on the front of her collar as Josephine goes, well, and she puts a hand on your hand, Gwyn, um, kind of kind of gently re getting you to sit back down. It's like, would you like a nice drink? I could use one after that. I'm Yeah, Gwyn, you, you seem quite upset. I think that No, I'm fine now. Drink. I'm I'm Thank fine. It's just <laughs> If you would like, I could bring you back to my private cabin and you could rest there. Yeah, Gwyn, maybe you do look very shaken. That's not a bad idea. So, she says, well, thank you, my, my dear Sylvia. Don't worry. I promise I will look after your friend. Oh, I know you will. Don't worry. So... Taking you by the hand, she leads you out of the uh, dining carriage. Oh shit! Does my the illusion fade from what I, I was no, talking about? No, it hasn't years. faded yet. But um, you, you I'm gonna think you should get out of here. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I'm gonna get the fuck out because <laughs> like I need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to be here anyway, so this so is you, fine. You, you book it back to Mina and Amanada and tell them like so. Mina, you see Sylvia coming back to you. Gwen's not there. She's fine, honestly. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> Look, you know, I think in this case, it's fine because that woman is not an innocent farm girl. So she is able to handle Grim. And yeah, you know suppose, what? In instances like this, right. when it is all very casual, it's fine. I have no issues with this. The problem is when, ev you know, Provided everybody knows what is going on, it's just, just a little bit of fun, and we are all having fun. You know, is everyone they said you take they take the clothes off, they have the fun, and all of that. Provided everybody knows that's all that's going on, it's fine. The issue with Juliet is she thought that more was happening. Yeah, I am concerned that Marie may also think that that is more. There is more going on, but that woman, there is no problem. So we leave them to it. Um, so Josephine leads you out of the dining carriage up to the first and then to another one of the uh, like the first class private cabins. And she brings you up to one of them, takes out a key, unlocks the door. You come in. It's a small cabin. OK, like it's about three meters across. Um, there are two bunk beds and then there is a small section with a little table area. And she turning to you, she closes the door. Pulls down a little blind over the window in the door. Takes your hands in hers and says, you're shivering. It's just the shock. Uh, just the shock. Uh, you, you were like a cat. I don't know what we would have done if you hadn't reached out and grabbed that little blah, bleep. Uh, oh, it's just a shock. I'd hoped you were shivering because of me as she leans in for a kiss. Well, maybe that too. <laughs> and we will fade to black. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just like spice, so on, happens, fun things. Oh, Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> fade what? To black. So, um... what? I'm helping. <laughs> you did help. You did. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you spend 
Um, guys, you don't see Gwyn again until about 10, 15 minutes before the train is due to arrive in Dijon. She's fine. I'm not even remotely worried. Gwyn, <laughs> Gwyn comes back very red-faced, looking... Very depressed. Yeah, <laughs> looking like she ran a marathon. Well, great train ride. <laughs> so, uh, what did I miss? <laughs> Sylvia's just going to hand her a hairbrush. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> She's not even going to say anything. She's just going to give her a hairbrush. My new friend, Josephine, is great, eh? <laughs> we can see her again when, when we are coming back, okay? We will. <laughs> we will. Okay. Sylvia will have updated Aminata and Mina on the whole thing and the famines and the possible getting work and the so, you know, all that stuff. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, by the way, before you left um, Madame Gautier, she did give you the name of the hotel that you'd be staying in and said that she could arrange for rooms for you and your friends. An excellent oh. idea. What's the name? Um, uh, uh, um, Le Grand Chambre. Yeah, but how much is it going to fucking cost us? Is that going to be all our gold gone? You don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll make we'll yeah maybe maybe gwen could just share with her and the rest of us could stay in a nice b and b or something <laughs> that's fine too <laughs> yeah listen so um you you get off the, the train eventually pulls into the train station in dijon um as you're getting out you see madame gautier she has a couple of cases that are being carried by some of the porter staff as she sees you she smiles and kind of leans her head uh, she's walking in the direction of a cab and as she alights she pauses and looks very pointedly waiting for you Gwyn oh okay well I'll go over to her and um, Sylvia will have given her a gentle shove and a gentle shove I'll kind of Jesus. briskly walk over and just give her a kiss on the cheek so would you like to join me I would love to <laughs> you've no idea how much but we really are on urgent business, as much as it pains me to say this. Well, the um, train to Paris is not leaving until the morning. Uh, well, now that you mentioned that, um, let me just talk to my friends and when runs back. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, Josephine has asked if I would maybe go with her for the evening. Um, no. And since our train doesn't leave till tomorrow, I just wanted no. to check that that was okay. Go. Um, where should we meet tomorrow at the train station? Uh, at the yeah. Time, have you got the load still with you? Um, no, Aminata still has that. Aminata, can you give her the load still just Thank with you. in case we lose we'll her? Get... So, you, so Mina, you have the um, you have the compass, and Gwyn has the load still. Yeah. Good thinking. Just okay, in case. So just be on the train, all right? <laughs> I'll be, just I'll be in there. case you lose track of time. I I hope to. Okay. And then try, go and, <laughs> so. try and get some sleep. Mm -hmm. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so... Um, so, yeah, Gwen, you go back off with uh, Madame Gautier um, for an so. evening in her suite in her hotel. La, La I Chambre. did say, in all fairness, though, I did say you should check an artificer, so there you go. Yeah, so, um, the rest of you guys, you look for a place, you actually do find a fairly nice-looking small guest house called La Petite Chambre, actually. Kind of funny. You're like, oh, <laughs> she to go. Okay? Um, it's a small little guest house. It's pretty nice. Um, going in, you see the the like main manager behind the desk. is this very tall, kind of heavy-set man, like really powerful, strong build to him, okay? Sandy blonde hair, the gray is wearing simple like tan colored waistcoat over a linen shirt with his sleeves rolled up and you just you see this like, little brass pocket watch as he comes in he says oh bonjour mademoiselle uh, my name is Hervé. um welcome to la petite chambre would you like rooms for the evening yeah thank you that would be great d'accord d'accord no problem at all um Yes, we can certainly give you uh, accommodation for the night. Um, it would be uh, six copper each for a room and then for breakfast in the morning. Yeah, this sounds good. Dinner will be served this evening at eight o'clock and we can just add that bill to your rooms. D'accord? 
Oh, yeah, and we can settle it as we leave it in the, the next day. We have a train that we need to catch, yeah? Oh, uh, I assume it's the train to Paris? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that leaves at 9.30 in the morning. Oh, uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, that call. Okay, so, yeah, you guys go. You have a very nice, enjoyable evening. It's a nice little place. It's a cozy little guest house, okay? Small rooms. It's all very nice. The meal you have is very do nice. We our own, do we have our own rooms you or are we doubling up? No, or... you have your own rooms again, okay? Okay. Uh, Gwen, you go with uh, Madame Gautier to uh, La Grande Chambre. This is a very fancy hotel. This is like four, four star, maybe five star kind of hotel. Mm -hmm. You're let in. The porters take her luggage up to her room. You're brought up in a little bit yeah, to this is a fabulous. This is a suite. Okay. There is mm -hmm. a small living room area. There's a chien lounge and so far. And a very big four poster bed. Like it's, yeah, it's very, very nice. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, well, I think after all the journeying, I should probably take a bath. Um, you could always join me. <laughs> oh, I intended to. Excellent. Yes. Um, I will, they will They will have the bath ready for us um, in about 20 minutes, okay? Um, there is a separate bathroom area, and there's a beautiful, large, like, uh, I, um, I, I, ivory-colored, like, porcelain bath with, like, the claw tooth, um, brass claw tooth feet. And they, they fill it up, uh, putting rose petals and oils into it. They're using hot stones, which you are aware of these enchanted yeah. stones that you, you literally just throw it into the bath and it heats up the water. You guys have a wonderful bath. She basically makes sure that you work up an appetite before you go downstairs for a very Excellent. fine meal that evening. And she's asking all about you. She's really interested in... Not just your magic, but also in your family history. As you're saying that you're coming from this line of women, you know, who've all, mm -hmm. you know, all spellcasters, you know. And she, and she I just asked, she's like, so no men in your family, no? Yeah, I think Gwen actually would give her a lot of detail. Yeah. Um, it's almost easier because she's kind of a stranger as opposed to the party who she knows well, mm -hmm. um, weirdly. And yeah, she'll explain that. Um, I had an ancestor, Althea, who was unfortunately burnt uh, at the stake for practicing witchcraft. And her daughter decided that the women in our family would, I suppose, never let people forget, <laughs> people by people, I mean men, uh, about what they did to Althea. So, um, yeah, the women in my family have always trained in magic. Um, it's just what we do. And we, we help the locals particularly like women in, in Exeter, if they find themselves in trouble, you know, of, of all varieties. And yeah, you're right. There's no men in our family and that's very deliberate <laughs> considering, you know. How are you able to ensure that none of your, none of the children of your family are men? Magic. Uh, we've quite an elaborate ritual to determine the gender of the baby i saw it once and my aunt performed it and i was young though but uh it involved lots of herbs a pendulum it's kind of hazy but yeah magic like most things we do all depends on magic fascinating i don't think i've ever met such a class uh, yeah i'm starting to gather we're kind of unique <laughs> I didn't think that obviously at home growing up it was yeah. all just normal but um realizing out here in the big bad world it's uh seems to be quite an unusual upbringing <laughs> we're very set in our ways i suppose um mm. and i'm kind of realizing i was raised at very specific beliefs <laughs> that yeah i guess the world is making me think twice about but Anyway, I'm rambling. That's that's enough for me. Tell me about yourself. Well, this is the thing. Like, she is like the perfect partner in that she's listening to you. She's engaged in you. She's interested in what you're saying. You know, she's laughing at your jokes, and she is genuinely interested in what you're saying. She tells you a bit about herself. She is clearly a very successful artificer. This woman is loaded, but that in itself is not strange because artificers, as a profession, are very wealthy yeah. because of the nature of what they do. They're extremely rare. They make incredibly valuable items. Even the mundane items, the everyday items that people might buy, they're still so useful that you make a lot of money from that. And then on top of that, if you are getting into Magitech, 
working with industrialists, working with factories, you can be minted, you know, it's kind of crazy. So she talks a bit about her background. She was from a fairly like a kind of a lower middle class family. Her father was a clerk, but that at an early age, she showed signs that she was gifted in magic and that her father worked very hard to save up for her to be able to go to the Sorbonne where she studied in sorcery um, in the arcane and um, yeah um, she's like she's not like this being dismissive of her background but she's basically made it clear it's like she wasn't from any sort of a fancy exceptional family not a clan of female castes like you that she was from a very normal kind of lower middle class family but she was one of these rare humans who's born with the arcane spark um which you know yourself is rare in people who aren't fate touched but that um and that you know her parents worked really hard her father worked really hard to save up money so that he could pay tuition she was an only child so that made things a bit easier in a way and then she studied in the sorbonne she was exceptionally good at her skills she's a very gifted one of the top in her class um she does talk a bit about how during the war the government was 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 approaching artificers and trying to get them involved and some were getting involved a bit but she kind of stayed away from that that mm -hmm. um she talks about that how they were asking them if they could make enchanted weapons for the army and how like doesn't that, that doesn't work that like while there is such a thing as arcane revolvers firearms that don't use gunpowder but fire shots of pure arcane energy they were first developed about 30 years ago in ireland that um no one has been able to mass produce these because they are enchanted items if you wanted to mass produce them you would need a factory of artificers and mm -hmm. that just does not it's not possible yeah uh, so so this is a thing that you know she says a part, it was a extremely gifted um, dwarf of Jotunheim that was living in, in Ireland, in Dublin, I believe, who created the first arcane revolver from what mm. I've heard. And, um, Don't say. <laughs> they, they, they have been somewhat more perfected in the, in the years since. But, you don't say. Um, you don't say. <laughs> but that um, um, governments across Europe have tried to get artificers to make them for their armies, but it's not possible. They can't be mass manufactured the way a mundane firearm can, because with a mundane firearm, really all you are doing is assembling tubes to spring loaded pins and triggers. The power of the of the weapon is in the is in the gunpowder in the bullet you see, whereas the power of an arcane firearm is in enchanted stones that store arcane energy and is released by the weapon so yes mm -hmm. so yeah you do get a bit of a fascinating That's history on, on that mm -hmm. um and then you have yep. a wonderful meal she brings you back to the room um at which point you, she pulls out a few more items from her bag um including a long wooden wand which she, Jesus Christ. she runs her hands along the sides of it and um some of the some arcane glyphs on it start to um glow and well that's then, interesting i haven't seen one of those before um well you wouldn't find one of these in britain it's a, a bit more of a puritanical country they're rare they're called goblin wands and it starts to hum and as she hands it to you you feel it vibrating is that what we call them now oh excellent yes. you know yes. i can think of a couple of uses for this oh i'm going to show you and she does excellent <laughs> gwen is in love <laughs> just so you know <laughs> oh no that's not what my on the my <laughs> goblin wand okay <laughs> <laughs> so this is canon in the game. Goblin ones. Yes. Are I'm putting together. I'm putting together a shopping list as we see. <laughs> yeah. So, Don't worry. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> and the next day, you all get up. You uh, get to the train station where you find Gwyn and Madame Gautier. Gwyn is looking exhausted. Mm, Madame but Gautier very looks just as stunningly beautiful and fresh as she did the day before. Gwyn looks like she got about three hours sleep because she got about three hours sleep. Mm -hmm. Sylvia is gonna just you hear in your mind Sylvia saying you can sleep on the train you'll be fine I need to <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, Brandon is like, hey. Yeah. You, get, you get onto the train. This train journey is even longer than the one from the on to Dijon. Yeah. It's like a better... as As we're leaving, Sylvia will say, mm -hmm. um, we will maybe see you in a few days. So, yeah, as I say, you, it's, a tw it's like a nearly 12 hour train journey from Dijon to Paris. Gwyn spends most of that journey in the first class carriage with Madame Gautier. Does not get any sleep. Um, and you do eventually arrive in Paris that night. Amanata arranges for you a cab to her family home. When you mm -hmm. get to the family home in Paris, um, the door is opened by a, a young woman. Probably looks like she's about maybe 1920. Um, average height slender bill wearing a maid's uniform. As the door opens, she sees Amanata says, Oh! Mademoiselle Moreau, sorry, I did not know you were coming. She said, and I was like, oh, Julie, it's okay. And my parents, she's like, I'm sorry, um, the monsieur and the madame are away. It is just myself, money, the house at the moment. She said, please come in. So this is, she, I'm not explaining, this is Julie. She's one of the family maids. You And she, she arranges, you get to spend the night. You are doubling up here because it's like, it's a family home. Okay, there there is a, there's a guest room. And so one of you, um you you because you got sylvia uh mina you guys share in their guest room and gwyn is invited by amanada to share her bed okay um for the night and then the next morning amanada is gonna want details anyway oh, yeah. oh i'm gonna tell her all about this all new the angle thing all, all, the, all the details all the details yeah. okay all the details um poor you, mina would probably never mina, had them explode do you tell mina any of these details Oh no, no, <laughs> nor Justine. Yeah. They're just too innocent. So, <laughs> Sylvia fucking knows what exactly what you're getting up to. She just, she's like, Absolutely, yeah, Sylvia. Go was for a, it. Sylvia was yeah. an experienced lesbian. She knows all this shit. She <laughs> <laughs> was married. Uh, she so was like she still soul. is a lesbian. <laughs> but anyway, um, so next morning you get up. Julia's create has done a nice, simple but nice breakfast for you all. Okay, and. You jump on the train to Cambrai. All right. Um, so yet again, just so we're putting in the context, just how far you guys have traveled. Okay. Paris to Cambrai is still another 160 kilometers. Is this where Mina's brother is, where is Mina, on the map? This okay. is where Mina's brother is. Okay. So oh like, God, it's another, far. Like, oh, like you guys, as I said, you've traveled over 400 kilometers from Cherville. You know, I have to. Gwen is going to sleep on this has, train. Has way. Gwen taken exhaustion damage? <laughs> she, um, she's having a long rest Gwen, on this train. Gwen definitely <laughs> had taken exhaustion damage, but um, <laughs> like to put into context, okay, Cambrai is about forty kilometers from the Belgian border. You yeah. guys were like yeah. smack in the middle of Paris, or sorry, of France. Yeah, yeah. France. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. think how massive France is. You guys were like Auvergne, like pretty much mm -hmm. smack in the middle of the biggest country in like europe you yeah. know so okay. yeah um in western europe certainly but um so yeah um you do eventually you get to cambrai um when you arrive in the town it's kind of late afternoon okay so or sorry early evening it's like half five six okay when you get there okay. gwyn if you want we to probably talk, into tavern well i mean if you as i said if you want you can cast your spell again yeah, well, that's what it, we need kind of somewhere secluded, I guess. We could just duck down a lane or something. You, 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 I mean, if you want, you could just do it in the train station. It's wherever you want. Yeah, cool. So you, you cast a spell again. This time, what you find is instead of it being a map of France, you see it forming lines of streets into the city itself, giving you an idea of exactly where you mm -hmm. are. And you see the pendulum kind of hovering over what looks to be a fairly large structure in, in like the northern section of the city. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So just give me this. Um, okay. I will relay that to the party. Yeah. Large structure, North City. So when you get out of the, um, I, I don't know if you want to go there directly or if you want to. Could be a hospital or something. So when you get it. <laughs> what you time of, is it now? It's kind of like half five, six o'clock in the evening. There's, uh, when you get out of the train station, there is, a, there is a couple of handsome cabs out front. You know, we could do a drive by. And just see yeah. what sort of building it is, and then yeah. maybe tomorrow, 
Yeah, we. Yeah, I, I think it's find yeah, an inn do. or something close by. Absolutely. They so. should. They should definitely. But we tell this to the handsome cab driver. Explore. When, when yeah, you yeah. when you uh, yeah, yeah. write the details and say we're looking for a large building in this section, he says, "Oh, is that the you're looking for the only large building in that area of the city is the uh, Pamentia Hospital, the military hospital." Okay, Gwen just kind of oh, looks at me. Is, the is there um, any? Um... Okay. Is there an inn anywhere close by? There's a guest house nearby. I could bring you to yes. Oh yeah, that that would be perfect. Um, and while he's driving, I'll just ask. So, uh, what sort of military hospital is it? Like a long term, uh, residential, or is it short term? It's a mixture of soldiers Everything. who had be, who, who had um, being recovered mm -hmm. from injuries, but then other soldiers who had more serious debilitating injuries. Um, um, men who've lost limbs who are lost the use of their legs, who need full-time medical care, are also in this I was hospital. afraid of. Okay. Um, Sylvia, you know you can sit this one out if it brings back too many traumatic memories of the hospital. Look, no, I'm before. going, I'm fine. Like, Nina needs to find her brother and, you know. Um... Sylvia, you can't even smell a healing poultice without having some sort of flashback. I don't know if going into a hospital is a good idea. Ah, uh, look, you know, you just put the head down, you get through these things, it's fine. Okay. So, do you ask to be brought to the guest house near the hospital? Yeah. I think yeah. so, because it's so late. Okay, so you're yeah. brought to a, a nice guest house near the hospital. On the front, you says uh, Chateau de Ceci. And um, going inside, it's a smallish guest house. Um, you see there's a woman sitting at the desk, um, kind of stocky build, brown hair, round face with freckles, and she's like wearing a nice, fine, dark green dress with like some red details. She's, she's like, oh, bonjour. Um, my name bonjour. is Naomi. Um, would you like rooms for the evening? Yes, yes please. That would be excellent. The co um, unfortunately, I only have three rooms left, but you can share if you wish. That's fine. We'll share. That's yeah, perfect. we'll share. Okay. Um, is it just for one night, or do you be staying here for a few days? Um, one night for the moment. Maybe we'll let you know tomorrow. That's cool. Okay. So she arranges your rooms. You have a nice meal that evening. Nothing too fancy going on, unless do you want to do anything? Well, how's Mina? Well, yeah, Mina is um, when while you arrange the rooms, I just gonna say to you guys, oh, um, can you, and especially looking at Sylvia, can you organize all the rooms and maybe some lunch or or dinner for some dinner or something? I just gonna yeah. go and ask, like any sort of visiting or something. And yeah, um, yeah. how far is it? Is it walking distance? Yeah, like? it's like five minutes. He, you pass Perfect. the hospital to get to the guest yeah. house. Brilliant, brilliant. So I know where it like, oh, I, I'll Sylvia find is, my way back. Sylvia is going to just say, do you need uh, one of us? No, 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 I'll be fine. I'll okay. be fine. And I'll All just, right. I doubt they let me in, but like, you know. So okay. um, I'll go for a walk and I'll go to the hospital and see if I can find the entrance and the uh, reception or you something. Go, like that. Yeah, you go to the hospital, you go in the front, uh, the front door, you see there's, a, there's like a front kind of reception desk area. There's a, a young woman in a nurse's uniform, very, very pretty, kind of slim, blonde. Well, oval face, like her skin, and she's wearing. Gwen, like, no. The, uh, the, the, the blue nurse's uniform. She's riding in a legend. It's like everybody in France. You know, there's a lot of hair colors in France and blonde, like you know. <laughs> um, but anyway, so she looking. She says she kind of like looks at you a bit strange, like, like what the fuck are you doing here? This so nice, like, uh, bonjour. Bonjour, and um, hi, um, I'm uh, actually looking for um, somebody, I'm looking for my uh, brother, um, his name is uh, Alois Tuisik, and um, I take out a, a piece of paper that was like one of his early letters, uh, where he had given me all the details of his rank and number and everything, so I read it all out for her. Um, I was hoping maybe you have, um, I, I was told I might be able to find him here. Um, do you have any um, documentations of your patients? Um, we do, but we don't, we don't, if it's, I mean, it's not, certainly not visiting hours, but 
I th if it's who I think it is. Come with me. Okay. And she gets oh up God. and takes and kind of gestures and she leads you down the corridor. You go up like two flights of stairs, take a right, going down a long hallway. There's like doors on either side. This is a very large building, okay? Uh -huh. And as she, you get to a door of a room and she says, I do not know if this is your brother. If it is, prepare yourself. And she opens the door. Okay. And to a small kind of cell, there's like, it's a small single bed. There's a small wash basin. There's a chamber pot. And sitting on the bed, staring off out into the window, you see your brother. But he is extremely gaunt. He's missing his left arm from just below the shoulder. Um, he's kind of just rocking forward and backwards ever so slightly. And as the nurse goes, Hello? Your sister? Your sister is here? Your sister is here? Hello? Your sister is here? And he turns in the direction of the voices and looking at you both, there is no expression. There is no recognition. His face is completely blank as he looks straight through you. As she turns, he's, he has not spoken since he came here. His mind is gone. I am sorry. And that's a perfect place, I think, to pause <laughs> in our story. I was just oh, waiting for that. Oh, oh. I can't read oh. Roland's yet. Or restore his I mind don't, yet. That's not the biggest problem here. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't fix his mind either. I can't do that. Yeah, not yet. Well, we'll have to find a um, renowned um, old gypsy healer that this. sometimes yeah. travels to the south of France. <sighs> Well, we'll have to wait and see. Thank you, folks, for joining us tonight. Thank you for the raids and the first-time chats. It was wonderful to see you all here. Oh, we had raids. Nice. Yes, we had a few raids. Um, it, I didn't log into Twitch, so I didn't oh, see anything. Oh, same. I didn't see it. Um, no, it's, well, I know you guys normally don't because broadband and so forth. But thank you all yeah. for reading Don't for risk anything. It was a really great session introducing some new, interesting um, saucy NPCs. Oh, that's um, okay. I, I expected worse. <laughs> Mina being reunited with her brother. We will see what happens next. And um, just a reminder, we do currently have a, a Kickstarter running for our Rules Light Whimsical TTRPG Fey Wanderer. This is a game in which you play fey creatures on a quest for treasure in the fey realm. This is a really fun game. It's suitable for all ages, from young children to adult children. Um, very simple set of rules. You can read the entire game create your characters as the gm create your adventure and be ready to go in like under 30 minutes okay link for the kickstarter is in our chat is in our chat we've totally destroyed our funding goals and there's still about eight days left um we've burst through all of our stretch goals we're doing great but if you'd like to support us that would be awesome um otherwise be sure to be checking us on the usual um social medias we are on twitter screw musky i am not calling it anything but twitter we are also on blue sky if you're lucky enough to have gotten an invitation code we are there also at fey earth and you can of course find us on youtube for old vods and for one shot streams um, last friday i did a solo stream going through how i do stat box for creatures and um, both for within fey earth and also kind of useful for any system so anyway that's a lot Thank you all. We shall see you all next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Grand, you man.